Fashion News. Good evening and welcome in the headlines. Finance Minister says. Hi, I'm Suman Bajaj Kalra, a media professional working in the field of films and television. Today we are going to talk about the characteristics and the development of the satellite and cable television industry in India. Television plays a very big role in our lives. It is an entertainer and a source of instant delivery of information. It brings the outer world to our door and helps to enrich our mind about the issues of the world we live in today. It would not be wrong to say that it surrounds us in more ways than we realize and has virtually become a companion. Thanks to television, we know our world and relate to it much better. Television has given boost to the dawn of information era that we are a part of. Globally, television has seen an unprecedented growth in the past decade, which has only been accelerated in recent times thanks to the digital revolution. It brought high definition content and the magic of convergence technology to the consumers. In order to comprehend this growth in numbers and technology, let us look at the impressive figures. As per the TAM Annual Universe Update 2010, India now has 134 million households out of 223 million with television sets of which over 103 million have access to cable TV or satellite TV, including 20 million households who are DTH subscribers. In urban India, 85 percent of all households have a TV and over 70 percent of all households have access to satellite, cable or DTH services. TV owning households have been growing at between 8 to 10 percent, while growth in satellite cable homes exceeded 15 percent and DTH subscribers grow 28 percent over 2009. Cable TV households are probably closer to 120 million. It is also estimated that India now has 550 TV channels covering all the main languages spoken in the nation. These includes channels from the state owned Doordarshan, News Corporation owned Star TV, Sony owned Sony Entertainment Television, ZTV, Sun Network and Asia Net. Direct to home service is provided by Airtel Digital TV, Big TV owned by Reliance, DD Direct Plus, Dish TV, Sun Direct DTH, Tata Sky and Videocon D2H. Dish TV was the first one to come up in Indian market. Others came only years later. These services are provided by locally built satellites from ISRO such as INSAT 4CR, INSAT 4A, INSAT 2E, INSAT 3C, INSAT 3E as well as private satellites such as the Dutch based SES, global owned NSS 6, Thicom 2 and Telstar 10. We will go into it in detail later as we go along. Let us get to know the world of television better. As media professionals and aware citizens, we need to know how it can serve us better, what to expect from it and what it can deliver. This requires knowing it 360 degree, that is understanding its invention, development, technology, programming and the economics. India may not have led the technological advancement in the field of television, but today it certainly stands at par with the most advanced nations in the field of development in the satellite and cable television. There are three kinds of television services available to us. The analog public broadcast network also known as terrestrial network, cable network and satellite television network. The last has made direct to home that is DTH and direct broadcast satellite that is DBS services possible. But to begin with, let us first understand the three tier television signal distribution system and the distinguishing features of each. 
The difference lies in their technology, programming, funding and distribution platforms. However, all the systems are beneficiaries of the fast paced technological advancement taking place. It has blurred the sharp differences between the three systems. It is analog transmission and the oldest television signal distribution system. It is also referred to as broadcast TV and is distributed through a chain of television transmission towers or earth stations. The transmission towers need to be high powered that is HPT in order to cover a very large area of transmission. In addition, a large number of towers are required to carry the signal to a long distance. In other words, wider the range of TV signals, more transmitters are required to carry the signal to a longer distance. It is like a relay race where one tower aims signals at the next tower placed at a distance to beam signals to a wider viewership. In India, Doordarshan has been the sole terrestrial broadcast network since it launched in 1959. It is owned and run by the government. It held monopoly in the country for many years until the doors opened for private channels in the early 90s. Various channels, regional, national, niche channels like sports, culture, news, etc., of Doordarshan are available to 93% of Indian population, a reach unmatched by any cable or satellite television channel in the country. It has a network of 22 channels. 66 production centers and 1400 transmitters spread across the country. Even though in terms of the reach, Doordarshan, the public broadcaster, still remains the leader in India, satellite television has given it a tough fight in viewership. It is gaining ground day by day due to its slick and entertaining programming and sharp digital reception. The programming of the private satellite channels is primarily aimed at entertainment so that it attracts a large viewership which in turn results in maximum profits for the organizations in the form of advertising revenue and subscription fee. Indians got the first taste of satellite television when CNN brought live coverage of Gulf War to our screens in 1991. Indians woke up to savor the magic and the power of the satellite television as it broke the time and geographical barriers. In the latter part of 1991, the monopoly of Doordarshan ended with the launch of privately owned satellite channels like ZTV, Star Bouquet, Sony TV, etc., followed by many others. Initially, they operated from offshore locations as the airwaves were considered to be under the governmental control. A Supreme Court judgment in 1996 led to a major change of scenario when it ruled that the airwaves were not property of the Indian government and the private players had as much right to use them as the government. As a result, the private satellite channels set up their base in Mumbai to be able to draw upon the huge talent and infrastructure already available thanks to the film industry, advertising world and Doordarshan. This gave level playing field to the television industry and the competition for the viewership started in right earnest. By 1996, Indian viewers were exposed to more than 50 channels with many more in the pipeline as the viewers were hungry for more. Cable television service stepped in to reap the harvest and satisfy the hunger for more channels. It gave tough competition to the public broadcast network, Doordarshan, in India. The government had to formulate a regulatory policy to curb its march. The new policy made it mandatory for cable television to carry at least three Doordarshan channels on its prime band. So alarming was the threat perception. Cable TV works through a network of cables laid from the distribution hub to the receiving end or the end consumer. It transmits good quality picture and sound. Its reach cannot be too far because of the inconvenience of laying and maintaining long cables through different terrains 
often laden with obstructions. The term cable television refers to both local area cable TV networks and CAS that is conditional access system box based distribution of satellite TV channels received through large dishes and distributed through a network of cables. The latter is often a mix of paid or subscription channels and free to air channels. The term satellite television refers to the downlink and distribution of TV signals through geosynchronous communication satellites placed in the geostationary orbit and received through a large satellite dish or a set top box. Geosynchronous communication satellite is pointed at a predetermined area of the earth and moves in the orbit at the same speed and angle as the earth. In doing so, it appears to be stationary above the area over which it transmits signals. A large dish is installed in the main hub, a multiple systems operator known as MSO to downlink the signals for onward distribution to the end users or TV homes. India was the first country in the world to use satellite for direct telecast to the remote villages under its site program. It was a brainchild of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the founder of Indian Space Research Program. Thanks to the advantages and the adoption of the digital technology across the world, we are moving more and more towards satellite television, either in the form of DTH using a mini dish and set top box or through cable network using conditional access system that is CAS box. Digital technology has made it possible to distribute a large number of channels through the same transponder because it requires far less bandwidth for transmission compared to the analog signal. According to the latest FICI KPMG report, digitization, growth of social media and segmentation of the market were the key highlights of the media and entertainment industry in 2010, which registered a growth of 11 percent over 2009 and touched rupees 652 billion, that is rupees 65,200 crore. The latest technological advancement in the DBS and direct to home, that is DTH service. It is a wireless service as opposed to cable network which works through wires or cables to distribute TV signal. Direct to home is a term used to refer to satellite television broadcasts intended for home reception. DTH acts as a strong alternative to cable TV. The satellite receiver or set-top box demodulates or decodes and converts the signals to the desired form, that is outputs for television, audio, data, etc through mini dishes installed in homes. It is not prone to breakdowns. More importantly, the reception is not dependent on the cable system. Hence, it is possible to have DTH service in rural or semi-rural areas provided there are dishes to receive the signals. Being digital, the signal quality is very high. It is possible to receive a large number of channels due to its signal compression. In general, DTH service is the one in which a large number of channels are digitally compressed, encrypted and beamed from very high power satellites. The programs can be directly received at homes. This mode of reception facilitates the use of small receiver dish antennas of 60 to 90 centimeter diameter installed at convenient locations in individual buildings without needing elaborate foundation or space, etc. Also, DTA transmission eliminates local cable operator completely since an individual user is directly connected to the service providers. However, a digital receiver is needed to receive the multiplex signals and view them on a TV. DTH, in sharp contrast to cable TV, lends itself to easy monitoring and control. Direct to home, that is DTH satellite television, is becoming a buzzword in the satellite broadcast industry due to the fact that DTH offers immense opportunities to both broadcasters and viewers. 
Thanks to the rapid development of digital technology, DTH broadcast operators worldwide have been able to introduce a large number of new interactive applications in the television market besides a large number of entertainment programs over a single delivery platform. Indian television industry saw a tremendous increase in net DTH subscriber base to 28 million at the end of 2010. The advertising industry, which had taken a beating in 2009, saw a significant growth and played an important role in the growth of television industry, which grew by 15.5% in 2010 and is expected to see a compound annual growth of 16% by 2015. Programming is the key success mantra for any channel to become popular. This applies to all the three distribution systems. Viewers acceptance is a must for any channel to survive and thrive. Ever since its invention, television has held sway on the minds of the viewers and gained importance as a powerful media, a fact recognized by the private and public players alike. In India, its growth has been unprecedented due to the ever-expanding viewership, high technological advancements and an overall improvement in the economy and standard of living, enabling viewers to spend more money on entertainment and information. Advertisers have found television to be the most profitable medium of publicity and reserved the largest budgets for this medium. This media has been found to be most visible and giving the highest returns to the advertisers. It is thanks to these factors that cable and satellite television channels are flourishing beyond our expectations. Some obvious questions arise. Is programming the sole reason for the popularity of cable and satellite television channels? Is there a major difference between the programming of privately owned satellite and cable channels and the public broadcaster? What made people get hooked on to satellite television channels? This needs a close look at the approach to programming for television channels and the objective they set out to fulfill. As cable and satellite channels gained ground, the film industry, advertising world and large business houses got drawn to it because of the already existing infrastructure to feed the channels with programming. Funds flowed freely as they brought excellent and quick returns. Very simplistic logic for this popularity would be, free economy leads to flourishing private enterprises which are profit driven and consumeristic in nature. Satellite and cable channels fall in this category. As Indian economy moved away from being socialistic to a more liberal economy, government controls on the media loosened, making space for private channels. These private channels have no social or political commitment. Their aim is just to entertain and inform viewers in the best manner so that a large base of very loyal viewership can be created across the country. The logic is, larger the viewership, higher the profits. Advancement in technology has helped cable and satellite TV channels to refine their productions and transmit them in high quality. Digital technology has created a virtual revolution in the television industry. Digital technology has made it possible to transmit a large number of channels in excellent quality by using a narrow bandwidth. This ability to offer variety in the form of bouquet of channels from across the world has drawn viewers to cable and satellite channels in a big way. Globalization has been the cause as well as the result of this phenomenon. Viewers have been mesmerized by the fast and varied changes in the programming leading to the change and shift in viewing choices and habits. Much of the programming in the reality genre involves and engages a common man and makes him feel very important. Private channels do not have to bear the burden of promoting culture, morality, socialism and development. They only serve one master and that is populism. 
research showed that there was demand for two kinds of programming, entertainment and news. The viability of other kinds of niche channels was less. Amongst entertainment channels, sports channels hold an enviable position as they continue to be highly in demand. Since satellite channels beam programs over regions comprising of various countries, their choice of programming is dictated by what would appeal to the commonest of tastes and sensibilities. Innovation is the key as far as the cable and satellite TV channels are concerned. Every day new program formats are created, making television more and more interactive. Rights and licenses to the popular formats from across the world are acquired, Indianized and served up to entice the viewers and make them feel like an active participant of the entertainment world. Television has become a friend who not only talks to you but also listens to you and acknowledges your phone calls and rewards you in return. These channels do not believe in the segmentation of the viewership. Speed is the key. They are quick to adapt to the changing tastes and trends. They are market driven. Television rating points at TRPs and television audience measurements that is TAM, warfare hots up as they bring out the viewership results every week. AMAP goes even further. It gives the viewership data overnight along with the viewership demographic information of the viewers for each show. These ratings indicate the popularity of channels and programs and help to determine the advertising rates that each program can fetch from the market. In this kind of scenario, it is not surprising that cable and satellite channels have a free run. Their one-point agenda is popularity, the widest viewership base. Everyday new gimmicks are tried to achieve this objective. This revolution in television industry compelled the government to put regulatory system in place. Information and Broadcasting Ministry brought out Cable TV Network's Regulation Ordinance 1995, making it compulsory for the cable operators to register with the government before launch. They had to also follow the specified code for programming as well as advertising. All over the world, the satellite channels were primarily launched with the programs which were mostly acquired because of their high popularity, commercial value and reputation in the first run. Acquisition for rerun was and still is far cheaper than producing original programs. The latter required huge investment for setting up production centers, acquiring equipment and hiring human resource in all areas. Private channels could ill afford that. It was very economical to run satellite or cable channels where there was only one common language like in the North American region. For multilingual, multi-nation scenario, the programs had to be dubbed in different languages and the signal had to be split and encrypted to serve the different linguistic zones. Satellite and cable channels are funded by private entrepreneurs who may be individuals, large business houses or corporations. Their sources of earning are advertising revenue and the subscription fee that is paid by the subscribers for accessing TV channels of their choice. There is also a marginal income from selling or licensing the more popular and commercially successful programs or program formats across the world. More entertaining a channel is, higher is the viewership and the profit through subscription money and the advertising revenue. No wonder then that most of these channels aim at pure entertainment. Since the satellite channels beam over a region rather than a country, they often traverse different time zones, countries and cultural identities, though not very far apart. This necessitates that the programs are repeated at least three times in a 24-hour cycle so that each linguistic and cultural identity in the region is able to view it at prime time. This also helps the channels to collect optimum advertisement and subscription revenue from all the countries it transmits to. Additionally, it reduces the programming cost due to repeat telecasts in a 24-hour cycle instead of doing fresh programming for the entire transmission. Satellites know no political or geographical boundaries. 
they send their signals to the area they are directed at. Their footprints often cover several countries and parts of some. They are truly global in nature. Cultural identities matter little in this scenario. What matters is, is there dominance of one language in the footprint territory of the satellite? Historically, satellite channels owe their popularity to two factors. First, acquisition rather than original production. Secondly, serving family entertainment and targeting the female audience or housewives as the core of the family. You could also say that they aim to appeal to the lowest denominator in order to win over the largest number of viewers. India stands out as an unusual example because of its language Hindi. It is not understood in other parts of the world. In the Western world, this problem was overcome by dubbing the soundtrack in the local language. It was acceptable by viewers since the dress code, skin tone and culture were very similar across countries. Satellite channels like ZTV etc. had to do original programming to cater to the Indian audience. Some satellite channels like Star Plus experimented with dubbed programming. The experiment did not go down very well with the audience because of the strangeness of the foreign culture. There was also problem of achieving perfect synchronization of dialogue. As satellite channels gain more and more popularity with loyal and hungry viewership, they become highly profitable ventures. They not only go for original programming, but in fact, keep raising the bar for grandeur and slickness in productions. No stone is left unturned to build on and hold on to that popularity as well as stay ahead in the race. Economic development propels the popularity of satellite channels as the markets are able to sustain the channels. The viewers have the necessary spare money to spend on entertainment. The growth of private television channels is directly linked to the economic and technological advancement of a country. India is currently in an enviable position because of an excellent track record in both these areas. The growth of television industry in India is going to be phenomenal as it is closely linked to the developmental efforts, spread of electrification and economic progress. There is no looking back. Globalization, a happy coexistence of localization and globalization is here to stay and so is direct to home, ever serving a fanciful fare to its demanding master. For a change, it is viewers who call the shots. Convergence and multiple platforms are going to give further boost to this industry as the viewer would don the mantle of not only being the consumer but also the producer of entertainment material. The most obvious example is YouTube, which is gaining popularity day by day. Digital convergence technology has made it possible to access all media at any time, any place and any format, be it internet, iPod, mobile phone, iPad, iPhone or television. Television industry is poised to touch the sky like no other industry as is evident from the following figures. The share of broadcasters in the subscription pie is expected to touch 30% in 2015, up from 21% in 2010, improving with addressability. For top-line broadcasters, the share in subscription revenue is expected to increase from 28 to 36 percent by 2015. Global media mogul Rupert Murdoch had this to say, bring on digitization and bring the Indian storytellers and journalists to the world. Viewers deserve a choice in a vast and diverse country like India. That's all for today. I hope you liked this lecture and found it useful. Goodbye and all the best. Thank you.